Hi, welcome everybody. Good morning. Uh, so my name is Max Reinstein and I'm currently a third year medical student studying at University College London. So today uh, I'll be giving a talk on the prediction of vault at one month for the implantable columnar lens using intraoperative vault by OCT. Uh, I have no financial interests and here are the financial interests of my co-authors. So over one million ICLs have been implanted since the 90s and the outcomes have been great. However, the greatest challenge which still remains is sizing, as sizing is the source of the short, medium and long-term complications which are significant. Now, sizing methodology has evolved from the simple white-to-white -white based measurements to uh, most recently the ciliary body inner diameter based measurements. But no matter which model you use, there are always outliers, and these outliers will need to return at a later date and undergo a second procedure in order to exchange an incorrectly sized lens. So we set out to create a formula which could predict the one month vault using an intraoperative measurement. And this information would inform a surgeon whether or not an intraoperative, um, an intraoperative, uh, sorry, would inform a surgeon whether or not a case of extreme vaulting requires an exchange in order to ensure that the vault stabilizes at a safe uh, height. And this would reduce the need for a second procedure, ultimately reducing post-operative complications, reducing treatment costs, and improving patient satisfaction. We analyzed data from 171 consecutive ICL procedures at the London Vision Clinic, and our preoperative lens sizing was done using the Reinstein V2 model. This was published in the Journal of Refractive Surgery last year. Our intraoperative vaults were captured using an Artivo 800 microscope, and the postoperative vault was measured using MS39. Here's an example of how we made our measurements. So in this frozen frame of the video image on the Artivo, you can see two OCT scans on the right of the image. And on the right of each scan is a scale bar, which was used to calibrate the vault height in each image. And so in this case, the yellow arrow indicates where the vault measurement was taken, and it was found to be 1,097 microns. Here's the same case one month later. And as you can see, the vault has decreased by around 200 microns. Looking at our results uh, in the top right at the red boxes, you can see that there was more or less a, a, a mean decrease of about 200 microns between the intraoperative state and the one month state. Now, looking at the left, what we can see from this graph which shows the one month vault against the intraoperative vault is that the vaults which were above 450 microns intraoperatively increase, uh, tended to decrease by the one month post-op and the volts which were below 450 uh, microns intraoperatively tended to increase it by the one month post-op. So we, con we conducted a multivariate linear regression analysis on our, our data and we found that alongside intraoperative vault, statistically significant parameters in predicting the one month vault included CBID, which was mentioned earlier, lens size, and this, uh, the crystalline lens rise from the sulcus plane. So we and, uh, made an equation incorporating these parameters. Then we tested this equation on a set of 42 fresh eyes which were not included in our model, uh, well, to develop the model. And we found that the formula was able to predict the post-operative vault to within 320 microns in all of our cases. Here's the probability tool which uses our model, and it's currently based in Excel. So how it works is you have your preoperative inputs. These are the parameters I just mentioned. You have your intraoperative vault, which is measured intraoperatively. <coughs> These together will allow the tool to calculate a one-month prediction, which is 628 microns. And finally, the range calculator allows the user to input limits and it, the tool will calculate the probability that the vault stabilizes outside of these limits. So just as an example, I chose an upper boundary of 900 microns and the tool calculated that there would be a 2.13% chance that the vault stabilizes above this upper boundary of 900 microns. Out of all the cases we had, uh, two underwent an intraoperative exchange. Now, the formula or the model was not available at the time, so the decision to exchange was made based on the clinical judgment of the surgeon. Uh, 
Now, as we can, uh, focusing on one of the cases, uh, you can see that the intraoperative volt was very high at 1,345 1, microns. Now, had the surgeon, or any surgeon for that matter, had our model, they would have been able to see that there was a near 70% chance that the vault would remain above 900 microns by the one month post op. Providing the knowledge to any surgeon of any level of expertise that this was probably an incorrectly sized lens for this specific patient. And this is exactly how we would want our formula to be used uh, by, by surgeons um, in, around the world. So in conclusion, intraoperative vault can be used to predict the one month postoperative vault and the use, with the use of our tool, uh, the extra information can inform a surgeon on whether or not a case of extreme vaulting requires or does not require an exchange in order to ensure that the vault stabilizes at a safe height. And we hope that along with uh, accurate preoperative lens sizing, intraoperative vault could completely eliminate the need for a second procedure. And this would, of course, lead to reduced post-operative complications, reduced treatment costs, and improved patient satisfaction. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks very much, Max. Um, is there any question? Comment? Quick, quick one. Just suggestion. It would be, if you have not done so, it would be interesting to uh, look for a possible correlation between the, this trend to diminution of bolt to the position of the IOL, of the ICL, to the position of the ICL. So most surgeons, except in the toric implants, used to implant in the same position, the, the, the ICL, but with time, the ICL obviously positioned itself as it wants. Uh, so it would be nice to, to, to look for a correlation between, between this movement and the change in bolt. So you, you can use intraoperative OCT to assess the, the tilt of the lens and lenses can be repositioned um, and, and we, we can see changes in bolt accordingly. Uh -huh. yeah. Great. Okay. Our next speaker is myself, so okay. I Thank introduce myself.